Welcome to Advanced Quantum Chemistry and my first lecture on density functional theory. The basic idea of density functional theory is that the energy of a system can be expressed as a functional of the density. There are two questions now. A. What is the precise form of this functional dependence? And you might ask yourself, first of all, what is a function at all? Let me try to explain that with another example. And that example is the energy calculated as an expectation value of a wave function. That is what we have done so far, for example, in Hart Fock theory, where the Hart Fock energy is calculated as the expectation value of the Hamiltonian with the Hart Fock wave function. And that is nothing else than that we let the Hamiltonian act on the wave function that pre multiplied with the complex conjugate of the wave function and integrate over the whole space. So the energy in includes an integral over the whole space, which means that the value of the energy depends on the value of the wave function, on the values of the wave function in the whole space. And this precisely is a functional, meaning that a functional in contrast to a function is when the value depends not only on the value of the variables in one point, but in the whole space, as here, because here the variable is sort of the wave function. And the same is in density functional theory, we have that the energy is a function of the density. Now let's talk a bit about densities, and let's start with the one electron case. So we have a system with one electron, which means that the wave function is then only an orbital, and let's start first with a spatial orbital. According to uh, the Born interpretation, uh, the electron density is uh, the wave function multiplied by its complex conjugate. So it's the norm squared of the wave function. Now, if we start with a spin orbital, um, then we can sort of define also corresponding expression, which one could, could consider a spin density. In order to get the normal density, we then have to integrate the spin out which is done here in this integral, where we integrate over spin. Another way we could, for a one electron case, calculate uh, the density is in form of an expectation value of a particular operator. And that operator is then what we could call the density operator. And as you can see here, um, it is just the Dirac delta function. Because if we write this out in a normal integral form, we uh, get this expression here. Then we can, uh, because this is not a differential operator, we can move the wave function uh, to the left. And then we get again this uh, uh, spin density. Then we can integrate the spin out, because the Dirac delta function does not depend on spin. And we end up with this integral. Now, why is that? Why is that actually the value of the density at r0? Well, this has to do with the properties of the Dirac that clearly see that uh, this integral here precisely gives us the value of the density at the point r0. So, so this Dirac delta function here uh, we can use as a density operator. That's for the one electron case. We can generalize that function <laughs> um, because the Dirac delta function essentially has precisely that property. If you take an arbitrary function f of x, you multiply it with the Dirac delta function uh, delta x minus x0, and you integrate over the whole space of the variable, which is x, then this integral precisely gives the value at this point x0. So um, multiplying a function with the Dirac delta function and integrating over whole space eventually extracts the function value at the point, which is this argument of the Dirac delta function. The Dirac delta function itself has a particular uh, uh, properties. It is zero over the whole space except for the point x0, which is the, the second argument. And in that point, it's actually infinite. However, it also has the property if you uh, integrate the Dirac delta function uh, itself over the whole space, then its value is 1. So it's uh, um, normalized to 1. Now, with that uh, property of the Dirac delta function, you then can also to the uh, many electron case, which we have here. We can define as then a density operator for a 
many electron case, which is then just a sum over uh, Dirac delta functions for each electron i. Now let's use that for a single determinant wave function, uh, where we can now use uh, the slater condon rules. Um, we have the same determinant on both sides. We have one electron operator, which means we get the sum over all uh, um, spatial orbitals times two um, of integrals of the orbitals with this uh, operator here, with this one electron operator. And again, remembering uh, what the properties of the Dirac delta functions uh, delta functions is, you can see that it's going to pick out the value of these two orbitals here at the point R0, precisely this one. So for one determinant wave function, um, the density is actually calculated as a sum over all the occupied orbitals times two. If the spatial orbitals, in case of spin orbitals, would be just a sum over all the spin orbitals um, at this point. Now, the big idea from DFT, of course, is that in order to calculate the energy, we need only a quantity which depends on three coordinates because the density, that is the density at one point in space, so it's a function of the three coordinates of that point, x, y, and z. So it's a very simple uh, function compared to the wave function methods, where in order to calculate the density, we need a quantity, this many electron wave function, which depends on three n coordinates. So it's a much more complicated uh, quantity. So that's the, the big argument for using DFT. But wait until the next lecture.